everybody today for joining us. We are really excited to re be presenting to you something that we've been working on for quite a while. Uh, as most of you know, Image Armor is a pretreatment and ink manufacturer, and we are striving to improve the direct to garment industry every day. And I view it as our personal goal to make sure that it's easier for you to do direct to garment printing. Now, with that being said, um, we've spent about a year on this new formulation and have gone through many, many, many revisions. And we feel that we've come up with a really great product that beats and surpasses our previous products and offerings. Now, um, before we get going, a uh, quick little background. Uh, I have been in the apparel decorating industry since 1985. Uh, I guess that makes me the old guy in the room, uh, both literally by age and just in the industry, uh, which is scary to say because that has been an extremely long time and we've seen a lot of changes during that time frame. When I got started with screen printing, we saw the advent of direct-to-garment printing and I literally saw the future when I first saw that first machine and I thought, okay, this is something that I think will change the industry. So during that time frame, um, we got started technically on the manufacturing side in about 2007, 2008, when we launched our Viper line of pretreatment machines. Then in 2013, we launched the Image Armor pretreatments. Shortly thereafter, we introduced uh, the light shirt formula and then also inks and a variety of other stuff. Then about 2016, 17, we released the RTP Apparel, which allows you to do direct to garment printing without having to go through the entire pretreating process. Um, so having said all that, my goal from having been on both sides of the fence is to not sell you anything per se. I'm going to be upfront and probably blunt with a lot of this stuff. Uh, if you are here looking for a magic bullet for something that is going to change the world, uh, I could sell you a line that, you know, this new pretreatment will just take your thoughts and burn it onto the shirts, and everybody, you know, we have unicorns farting rainbows. That's not what we do here at Image Armor and iGroup Technologies. Uh, we try to be upfront and honest as possible with everybody. And I think after today, hopefully, uh, you'll see that the new platinum pretreatment is going to do just that. And I believe we are showing the image of our new bottles and everything. These are, we called it platinum because it is much better than our ultra pretreatment formula, we feel. And uh, we're super excited about getting people out there to get their free samples and try it. So at the end of the webinar, we will be giving you a link where you can go and sign up if you live in the US we will be shipping out a free quart. You do have to fill out the entire form and watch the video. Uh, and you'll be the very first people to get a chance to uh, publicly try the Image Armor Platinum. And the, uh, the quart is that smaller bottle there on your left-hand side, 32 ounces. Yep, and I've got one right here, if we can do it without the light shining on it. It's a, uh, it's a one quart, 32 ounce. Uh, this is enough to give you at least a chance to really kick the tires. And we will send that out to you free of charge and we'll give out that web address for the form so you can sign up and we will process those as we get them in. So we're expecting a, a lot of demand for this. So give us a little time to fill those and ship them out. And uh, just to make note, based on uh, our testing, the, uh, the court should last you a pretty surprisable amount of time. Yeah, you're so. not going to get five shirts out of it. Um, 
and we'll run through some of those. It will give you more than five shirts uh, unless you spill it or do something really stupid. Uh, it should last you a lot more than five shirts. So uh, make sure you please do submit your questions um, to Dean via the chat portion of this Zoom conference call. Actually, and actually, if you could use the um, question and answer. Question and answer, yeah, sorry. Segment, sorry. My bad. It's terminology, technology thing. I just show up and own the place and create stuff. They tell me to go away quite often. Just go do your thing. So um, with that, uh, I would say uh, if you have questions, throw them into the Q&A section, and we will get to those. But as you think about it, post it. Uh, Dean will be reviewing those, and we'll try to address a lot of that stuff. Uh, before we get into the details specifically on the Platinum, uh, we do have a bunch of other stuff that I, not a bunch, but some other special announcements. Uh, I guess this is the announcement about the announcement. Uh, we will have another one or two relatively big announcements, I believe, coming up in the next couple of weeks that uh, we will be doing a webinar on, hopefully. And uh, that's uh, going to be exciting for iGroup Technologies and the DTG industry in and of itself that uh, we hope will advance the industry even that much more. So uh, that's one side note. <clears throat> the other is I just found out today from our patent attorney on the machine manufacturing side that our Viper Mini, which is uh, one of the industry's newest and most innovative uh, pre-treatment application devices or machines, uh, we officially will be getting our patent uh, number next week. So we, yay, you know, we, uh, we will be making uh, more news and announcements on that. But if you're still hand spraying, um, there, there are better ways to do it. And using a machine of some type is probably your best bet for consistent, repeatable application of the pretreatment. Uh, we are very big proponents of that, not just because we manufacture the equipment, but because there's a lot of variables and variability that comes by spraying with hand or doing it by hand that could be a problem. And we will be running a special here where you can turn in your old Wagner uh, sprayer for a discount off of a brand new machine, whether it be our Viper Mini or our upper end Viper Max. And we'll be bringing out more details on that here in the next couple of weeks. We also wanna make sure that everybody that has a chance and is going to go to printing the Printing United show, uh, which is going to be October 19th, 20th and 21st in Las Vegas to come visit us. Uh, we will be showing off all of our new products, all of the pretreatment machines, uh, and some of the stuff that you see here, we will definitely have on hand there so you can do the touchy-feely thing if you like. Uh, we will also be in the apparel printing zone or the education zone with all of the pretreatment machines, answering all of your questions and trying to show you how important it is for the direct-to-garment printing process why you need to pre-treat correctly, use the right tools, the right equipment, and the right products, and what you can do to improve your direct-to-garment prints. So uh, let's see here. Uh, a few other things would be, uh, hopefully very soon, we are going to have a plethora of RTP shirts that uh, we'll be receiving. Uh, we've still been working with port congestion and uh, they keep pushing back some of those deliveries. So if you use RTP, hang in there. We will have a lot of stock coming in for this fall going into the Christmas season, which will be quite excellent. Uh, one other thing that we are really excited to announce is because of the growth of Image Armor, we have actually doubled the size and capacity of our manufacturing ability for pretreatments and we can produce around 20,000 gallons of pretreatment a day. Uh, so really the nice thing with this is, is we manufacture this here in the United States, in Ohio, and um, 
you know, we're really proud about that and being able to uh, produce everything here gives us a lot more control over that production process. Brian, oh, Brian, <laughs> did you say 20,000 gallons? Uh, yeah, that's, uh, it's a little bit of pre-treatment on Oop. a much bigger scale. <laughs> and we've so had to do that just for the sheer aspect that we've been expanding and we have great things that we're doing uh, in the industry and uh, even bigger things on the, the horizon. So, I mean, you've been in the industry for a long time, as you mentioned here, 20,000 gallons. Like, do you know of anybody else uh, able to manufacture on that type of scale? I mean, uh, I don't that, You know what? Yeah. I don't know. Not yeah. going to comment on that. Like, so I'll be honest with <laughs> that's people. A, that's a lot, 20, though. 20,000 yeah. gallons is pushing a swimming day. pool size yeah, when you, yeah. get, you get down to brass tacks. Um, it is a lot of liquid, and we're really proud that we've been able to double our capacity this year. And it's all thanks to our end users and uh, the people that have uh, supported us uh, through the years of this and allowing us to help make the pretreatments better and make life easier for direct -to garment printers. Uh, also, uh, the Viper line is actually expanding, and we will be doing some other webinars and stuff like that on few of the new products. We have our, <coughs> excuse me, our Viper Fang, which is a filling machine for a wide variety of liquids and products. Uh, for most of you out there in DTG land, this may not be applicable, more than likely. However, uh, for, on the more industrial side, we are expanding into more automation and filling and maintenance of uh, different products. Uh, one of those other products is what we call the Viper Sidewinder, which is an ink management system and will roll ink uh, in 20 liter cubes or whatever, however you want to package it so that white ink can be maintained easier without you having to shake it up all the time. And um, for any of the larger facilities, that can also be used to agitate pretreatment, correct? Uh, it can be used to roll pretreatment, but uh, mainly more so for the the ink maintenance side. Uh, even though the inks have gotten much better over time, uh, if they do sit too long, you know, you always want to make sure, you, especially in larger volume production facilities, that uh, you keep your white ink uh, in solution and ready to go because you, you don't need any issues with the inks in your printers. Obviously, that's sort of the lifeblood of the direct garment printing. So with that being said, uh, we'll work through, um, I guess, our main presentation at this point as to why everybody's here. Again, thank you for being here. The Platinum is a culmination of actually many years worth of work. And uh, some of the key points for it are it gives smoother whites better coverage and a lot of what we've seen and people in the field have seen is you can actually use less pretreatment and get the same or better results than you can with uh, another pretreatment, uh, even our previous Ultra. Now the exciting thing with that is, and we'll show some examples here in a little bit, is it is smoother, it has a softer hand and feel you will have a better yield on it and um, better wash durability. And also, uh, it is currently CPSIA and Prop 65 certified and soon to be Okio Tech certified. So if you aren't familiar with those, have fun, look it up on the web. It's about compliance of not having lead and mercury and all these bad things in the pretreatments. Um, but it's, it is certified currently for those two, and Okio Tech's Eco Passport will soon be uh, issued also. So uh, that being said, I guess, as I stated earlier, if you're here looking for a magic bullet and a pretreatment that is going to solve all of your problems, this is not it. We're not here to blow smoke uh, at you. We aren't here to do the sales pitch. Uh, you know, I try to be as upfront and honest about that, unlike um, some, some presentations will do things. And a little side story was is a couple years ago, 
I was at a trade show and somebody showed our product versus another pretreatment. And how they presented it was, well, look, ours doesn't stain. Well, the way that they did it was is they pretreated half of a shirt, heat set it, pretreated half the shirt with their pretreat, heat set it again. And anytime you overheat anything, it's going to discolor. So that being said, I can make any pretreatment stain or discolor or whatever. Uh, we aren't going to blow smoke at you to try to make the sale. That's why we're doing the one liter free sample because we believe in our product that much that we're going to give it to you so that you can try it yourself. Yeah, and, and speaking of that sample, I was actually at that show before I even came here and joined the team, <clears throat> but uh, it, the application amount was probably way too much. So it's and usually an over application that'll, that'll lead to easel, easily staining yeah. as well as the curing. So. And, and that's one of the big things with this pretreatment. Uh, it does allow for a lot less. You can use less on those problematic colors um, as well as even, even cutting the solution, especially on those really problematic colors. You can actually add a little bit of water to the pretreatment and still get phenomenal results. Uh, I believe Dean is gonna shift over here to the blue shirt and we'll take a look that this is just one of the blue shirts that uh, we've done. And the, the white ink is super smooth. This was about 18 grams of pretreatment and we probably could have gotten away with a lot less pretreatment on the shirt in and of itself. Uh, the hand and feel is great and super soft. Uh, we have this other one here. This is sort of more of a, a baby blue type thing with, um, you know, Walker Hill hunting. Yes, right. that is another one of my side businesses we do for fun. <laughs> Eco-friendly, eco keep the bees alive and... Uh, save the planet, right? Yep, uh, save the planet. Brian, be sure to show off the, the tags there just to, oh, to verify yeah. that what you're printing on. This was a Gildan... Ultra Cotton 2000, which obviously, as everybody knows, those can be some of the most challenging shirts to print, especially these weird off colors. Now, I'm not going to say that uh, this pretreatment is going to work on every color, every situation. It's not going to, um, you know, change the, how do I want to say it? If we go into how shirts are manufactured, um, a lot of times on the less expensive shirts, the way they keep the cost down is during the manufacturing process, they can use less, less quality uh, cotton, fibers, yarns. The dyes can be uh, less than ideal for a shirt in direct garment printing. And they may even cut out some of the processes uh, like washing of the fabric which can leave residual chemicals on the shirt and react with your pretreatments, no matter if it's ours or somebody else's. And that's where a lot of these problems come into play, especially when you're looking at polyester. Uh, polyester, obviously, everybody's going to be like, oh, does this do polyester? You know, can I do, you know, uh, fluorescent orange or this or that or whatever? Can you do polyester? Yeah, you can do polyester but you're not going to do polyester in the way that you're probably thinking just from the sheer aspect that most of the time the dyes used in the shirt are not that great. They've cut corners to keep the cost down, which is why in and of itself that um, you want to basically not wash a red polyester shirt with your white t-shirts. Why? Everybody knows for a fact that it is going to taint those white shirts. And that is a problem with, um, don't need that right now. Well, there, someone had a question. Oh. They wanted to know even if it was possible. Oh, to do a, a polyester, white polyester? Yeah, someone just wanted to know. I just wanted to show it off real oh, quick. Yeah. But yeah, yeah white poly do, is totally fine. That's with our do, light. This is with our, our light shirt formula on, uh, and I'll, we'll lay this out here so you can see it actually better. Uh, this is our light shirt formula. And the colors are super black and incredible. They look great. Uh, the prints wash really, really incredibly well. 
uh, when you cure the inks and everything correctly, it looks phenomenal. So yes, you can do that right now, absolutely easily on most of the polyesters. And, and no <coughs> staining, and what, is that a, uh, that's a sport tech, right? This is a sport tech uh, PC 540? 340, 540, 540, I think. Oh. Sportech 340, okay. I believe. Yeah, and no staining. So, yeah, I mean, probably yeah. doing now is, and we have quite a bit of uh, videos on our website and yeah. uh, on YouTube that kind of explain the poly printing process. Yeah, so. there's actually a really good one that's about 30 minutes long. Uh, we'll have to update it for the new Platinum. But uh, we talk about what you can and can't do. Um, you know, you want to do red polyester, not going to happen. I don't care what pretreatment it is at this point in time. You can only control what you can control in your shop, and that is how you apply your pretreatment, the pretreatment you use, and your inks and printer. You cannot control how a shirt is actually manufactured. You can't control if they've washed it uh, post-washing to get all the residual chemicals out. You can't control how tight that weave is because if the weave is really wide and you're trying to print on thin air, you're gonna have pinholes in your print. There are just certain things that you can't control. Now you can use a better quality shirt. Um, and that's another thing that we should discuss real quick is we just recently ran into this where somebody was trying our platinum and they tried it and uh, Bob was at the facility. Everything worked great, looked great, they loved it. They're gonna switch. Bob left, they, a week later, they're like, hey, it's not working, we're gonna go back to our old stuff. And it's like, whoa, wait a second, what's, what's going on? It worked perfect while I was there. What ended up happening was is they were spraying one shirt, better quality shirt with the old pretreatment and a lesser quality shirt with our platinum. Well, obviously, the main difference there between the pre, uh, besides the pretreatments is the fact that it was a lesser quality shirt. Sometimes you can even get shirts, same brand, but from different countries, that the pretreatment will sit on, soak into, react differently than, and will skew your results. So keep that in mind. Yeah, and, and just to clarify, but we, we did go back and resolve that issue. We, we figured out what it was. So Which just you have that? to keep in mind that the variables are going to control your end results. Correct. So anytime you alter your variables, expect slightly different results. There is no one general coverall, at least yet, but we're working on that. And you did... Did you mention uh, printing on red polyesters there, Brian? I did, and I mentioned that I will be up front with everybody. Platinum is not going to do it for you. Why, again, going back to the dyes and dye migration. Um, part of the problem, what some people will tell you, which we will we'll hit this in a second, is that, oh, all you can do it right now with our pretreatment. All you have to do is lower the temperature you cure your ink at. Okay, ink manufacturers and printer manufacturers typically have recommendations that they, you should cure your ink at for a reason. That's so it washes well repeatedly time after time. Lowering that temperature point so that the dyes that, sh that are go going to cause the sublimation problem, sublimating problem, so they don't come up through, you're actually under curing your ink. You might get a couple washes out of it, but in the long term, it's not going to last very well. Could you do that with this? Probably, yeah. Do we recommend it? No. Why? Because we want to make sure that our customers have good products that you can provide to your customers because it does us no good if you give a product away, it washes out, your customer gets upset, never buys anything from you again. That means we have nothing to sell and no customers to sell to, and we can't keep innovating in the direct equipment industry. So if you're looking for this, and like I said, I'm not gonna blow smoke at anybody. If you're looking for this to solve all your problems with polyester and everything else and be one magic bullet, it's not going to happen. Is it a big improvement over what we've been doing? Absolutely. In the past, some pretreatments you may have seen ghosting either from stacking shirts hot on one another and they sit there and the heat and everything reacts with the dyes in the shirt and all that stuff and you start getting 
a ghosting image either on the back of the shirt or the inside or even on additional shirts that maybe you're stacking on top of each other. We found that the platinum reduces that or completely eliminates that, which is another big thing uh, that we were able to overcome. But going back to your statement or question, I guess, concerning red polyester is, can you print on red polyester? Absolutely. Now I'm going to lay this. I'm going to lay this out over here well, on the side. So there's, people... there's got to be something special oh, about that particular about this, shirt. But right? like I said, I'm not going to blow smoke up uh, people's where the sun doesn't shine type thing. Okay. Now this here is our. We should be getting these actually in shipment on the water so we can get them here relatively soon. This is our RTP apparel. As a heads up, this was printed on an Epson F2100. As you can see, it, it's white. Hopefully the uh, colors are, are pretty accurate as far as the uh, going out over the internet. And this was conveyor dried for like five, six minutes at like four, probably 400 plus degrees. We tried to torch this thing just to prove that it would not die migrate. We have solved the problem, but again, as I mentioned earlier, as I mentioned earlier, it's not just one solution, and it's not just the sh shirt, it's not just the pretreatment. Everybody wants it to be the pretreatment. It's not just that. This you can use actually with any direct-to-garment printer, mainly except for Cornet, and actually I think it will work with Cornet. Uh, it will hopefully be available within the next two months. We're just waiting on the shipment to come in. We'll have it in red and black and then soon to be white. And, and I just wanted to make mention here because there was uh, somebody popped in. The, that is a solid white, but because of the texture of the garment. So it's sort yeah. of like a fish eyed sure or can... jerk. You have to go back. It's, it's not no. set to autofocus. It's, it's a but... mesh. It's a more of a mesh. Maybe, um, maybe put the uh, graphic just a little bit closer. See if yeah, it's, it's not, not in it's not focus. It's not yeah. focusing. But I it is a, on, so. it's more of an athletic mesh type um, weave. And that athletic mesh weave uh, has the hills and the valleys and all that stuff, which is why it doesn't look completely solid. Uh, this would be akin to the but, Sportec ST350, I think. I think I think that, that's that right. has the what I call sort of like the bird's eye mesh. Yeah. Uh, but it's a real f interesting weave. Yeah, but I mean, on the parts that are up, the 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 raised part, not the valley's oh, part, it is a solid, solid bright white with no solid. dye migration. Yeah, so absolutely and just zero. And just to reiterate, this is going to be the RTP uh, two thousand. Ready so so this is for our new RTP line. Now, yeah. uh, Brian, I believe you have a sample of another poly shirt there that uh, is showing dye migration uh, just to give a bad example of what dye migration on poly looks like yeah there it is okay this yeah I, this probably can't see it's really dull um and hopefully this yeah. sees here you can see the whites the even this is even on a black shirt and it's you know red is the worst but you can have this happen with any color. The dyes actually migrated through, muted out. This is supposed to be red, if you can't tell on screen. Uh, the whites are really pale, and it, it just does not look good. And that's part of the problem. You can't control the actual shirt and the, the product that you're getting there. Now, some brands will be better than others. I'm not going to go out and promote and tell you this one's better than that because, again, Different country, different water, different processes. Could be the same shirt, you could get different results. We've taken it upon ourselves to integrate our technology and what we are doing with our patent pending uh, stuff with the polyester, which has been actually in process for five or six years now. We've been researching this and working on it. We've actually completed it and been able to integrate it into our, I guess, official retail version one of uh, the RTP apparel ready to print shirts, zero dye migration. Uh, here's another one, if we can zoom in close on this. This would be a, the black shirt. 
Um, same thing, same weave, and we did this here uh, with, basically, we just sort of lightly kissed the shirt in and of itself, and with the heat press to get rid of any moisture, and then um, printed it and lightly kissed it again with the heat press to cure it out. And I, mean, I, the, the I just whites... changed the uh, I changed the focus on that, Brian. You okay. might be able to pop it up and show some okay, of the weave. Do it on the red one. The red one. Does yeah. That... Oh yeah. It... Can you see the the, the, the weave? actual weave? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. But on the show it on the red one too, just because right. uh, we'll that white to the side. that white is really impressive on a red polyester. So see on the actual raised parts, that is a nice solid white. Yeah. It's just the valleys that kind of uh, give yeah, it that appearance. Can, like so. I said, this has it does have some air. Um, gaps in it because of the weave. You can't print on thin air, so keep that in mind also. Um, but again, like I said, that was, I think, if I remember correctly, tunnel cured and run through the conveyor dryer at extremely high temperatures for an extremely long time. The feel of it is phenomenal. Uh, it's soft, it's pliable. When you heat it up, it does get a little stiff. As soon as it cools, it comes back. So can you print polyester? Yes. Now, I would say we get back to yeah. Let's get, get back to let's the original back. reason why we are here. <laughs> yes, let's talk about platinum now, right? Let's you know? talk about yes. platinum. Um, I believe these here. We'll start off with some of the basics. This here was a um, Bella canvas, 13 grams of pretreatment. We'll switch over to this one, and we'll see if we can't get. If you can sort of see the smoothness of the white and everything, it is yeah. just incredible and, looking. And just to reiterate, all the samples that we're showing today were all printed on the same printer, which is an Epson F2100. Yep. Uh, the Athletic Gray here, uh, same design. This was a Hanes Tagless shirt, and we actually ended up doing a little bit more pretreatment on this just because of the the weave and that of the fabric but if i can get this up a little closer hopefully that white is just solid and phenomenal it is <laughs> I, it is unbelievably ju just a, looking. just a little disclaimer here because uh i am an artist myself the our registration on the f2100 is not as precise as it should be so i, I noticed those little things like in his face and stuff but yes yeah Talking about the white, that's kind of primarily what we're looking at is the fill of the white, the fill of yep. the colors. And, it's... Um, and on a heather gray, with we must mention no staining. If we switch back to the... There we go. i got to pay attention to what's going on here. Uh, this was another Gildan Ultra Cotton. Um, I don't know if this is able to see that. We'll switch over here to the camera. Yeah, the registration on our printer is not exactly the greatest. Uh, but, we just use it for test printing, yeah, so it's that's just for why test I'm not printing, overly so. concerned about it. But just pay uh, attention to the actual color and the uh, yeah, vibrancy. It's, it's great. Even on this hot pink, we had no discoloration. Um, and again, we actually used a minimal amount of pretreatments on this one. I think we were at like 15 or 18 grams for that one specifically. The... Uh, We'll get this out of the way. We already did the light blue. Now, some of the interesting ones, I think we go back to the camera here. This is a tri-blend. It may be a little difficult to see, uh, but this was... Brian, in, can, yes. can, you, can you show the tag off? And that's oh. this is a, a Gildan, no, or a no, that's a Port & Co. Co. Just a basic kind of, uh, you know, not, not necessarily a low-end or anything, but an affordable uh, tri-blend that's pretty... Mm -hmm common yeah. out there and but what we ended up can doing be difficult with this, to print on what we ended up doing with this uh it's just the president don't worry actually i forgot to put that on silent we'll get back to him um is a lot of people ask about tri-blends and it is often very much a problem now I want to, and I'm hoping that we can still see this, and it may be difficult because under the lights, it's extremely difficult. I don't know if you can see this one here in this lighting. Yeah. So what we're trying to show off here, I can kind of see it. Can but you kind of see it? Yeah. Okay. So, Let's so see if we can zoom in a little closer and if we can see. 
I don't know. It, it's kind of difficult because of the lighting. I, I think you might. I think you can show it if you, if you actually point to it. Yeah. Right so. here. This is a tri blend. It's another port and company. We heat pressed this previously to being here live just to show you a lot of times what will happen is because of the dyes and the fabric in and of itself it will change color sometimes it will come back and other times it may not well we should mention that it's only heat press there's no that was only yeah, heat no press. heat no there was pretreatment at all, nothing on that zero pretreatment so, on this yeah the co the color difference that we're seeing is due to the shirt due, itself due yeah. to the shirt and the heat. In, in the heat press and the dyes in the the manufacturing process so we pre i wanted to preface that from that aspect that the garment in and of itself can play a huge role in how your pretreatment interacts with it uh, but as you saw on that uh, dark one, and I think we have to switch over to the other camera because this looks weird with our background. Uh, that is actually a 50-50 here that is awesome. And yeah, it just it, looks I, great. I, I just want to note the lack of quote-unquote staining. <laughs> So it, in, in conjunction with what you're putting the gar your, or what garment you are putting your pretreat on, it's also the amount. You really have to pay attention to how much you are applying. Note and, that, yeah, and, and note that this one here is another tri blend. Okay, this is another port company tri blend. We did 15 grams of pretreatment on this one, and there was virtually. I mean, I can tell from where the heat press marks are. Um, but outside of that, it just looks really well. Again, it comes down to application amount, uh, understanding how your pretreatments and everything work together. But uh, with this, it's allowed us to use less pretreatment and the platinum, because of that, and on those more difficult colors, you could cut it down with a little bit of water if you wanted to, to avoid that even more so, um, as well as, I think this one here, if uh, if you can see how, can we see that one? I, I think it looks great. Okay. We'll for, especially for here. a tri blend, yeah. Yep. Yeah, this is another uh, Port and Company tri blend. Uh, I believe that I, grams? Did, I took this one home last night and washed it, and it you know it looks great, feels great, um, as well as I think this one here, Dean will. Just throw this up here, outside of my fold marks. Ryan, can you can you kind of put that up to the camera a little bit too, just to kind of show the type of white? Yeah. Yeah. We Not, didn't. We really didn't get much dye migration on this. Um, it. I think a lot of that depends on the dyes that they use. And how many grams were was of platinum is on that? Uh, we went with. Let's see here. It looks like. This was 20 grams on this one. Um, and we actually did cu cure this one with a conveyor dryer. Yeah, that, so, so I'm, glad you, I'm glad you said that. Somebody just answered that question, or asked that question, yeah. was um, has any of these been cured through tunnel, so. Correct, now the pretreatment, the best way to do that is, is we had one customer that ran their, pre, they pretreated it and ran through the conveyor dryer, bone dry. And I don't care what shirt it is, any of those fibers are going to want to do this. And even if you heat press it to try and get these down because the pretreatment is creating a barrier, they want to still stick up, which is going to cause problems down the road. The ideal way and best way that uh, pretty much everybody out in the field has done is if you're pretreating it and running it through a conveyor dryer to dry it, get it to the point where it's still a little damp and then finish it on a heat press that will make sure you have a smooth surface then you can go right to the printer print it and then if you want to run it back through the conveyor dryer to cure the ink uh, you can do that uh, just remember it takes a lot longer in a conveyor dryer to cure your inks than it does on a heat press um, that's just a disclaimer so that people understand that the heat press is more efficient and there's pros and cons to both uh, heat press will always leave a mark uh, unless you do a super light press, 
but uh, to get a good smooth surface, that's really what you want for great printing. And, you know, the new Platinum allows for using less pretreatment typically than what we saw with our Ultra. And uh, sometimes it, we couldn't even get low enough on the pretreatment application, we could have gone less. Now, some pretreatment machines will only, I, you know, I know our equipment, you can lay down 10 to 12 grams uh, for a 14 by 16 inch area of pretreatment. And, and for those that don't know, what is our equipment exactly? What is what? What is our equipment exactly for those that don't oh, know? Oh, the Viper yeah, yeah. uh, pretreatment machines, like the Viper Mini, the XPT-1000, which is our mid-range, or the Viper Max, which is phenomenal. If you go to viperxpt.com, you can check that out. Uh, that allows for precise placement and fluid lay down. It is just a beast of a machine. And, um, but some pretreatment machines won't allow you to lay down that little, which can be a problem because if you're applying too much pretreatment, and again, like we said earlier, you could heat it, and it potentially on those, especially like those hard colors, light blues and weird colors like that, uh, it can discolor. Uh, it can bleach it or change it to be a darker color uh, or even burn. So what you would need to do on those machines if you can't lay down that minimum amount of pretreatment is you can actually cut the platinum a little bit, which will give you a more yield on your shirts. And it will effectively then, if you can only lay down say 20 grams, you cut it half half with water that would effectively allow you to lay down 10 grams of pretreatment. Um, I don't necessarily like doing that, but on some of the really problematic colors, you can do that and still get phenomenal, phenomenal results. Um, now, speaking to cutting, so all of our pretreatments are ready to use. They are ready to use, yes. What will you notice if you do decide to cut or water down any pretreatment or ours essentially? Um, basically, all you're doing when with the way pretreatments work is the water, the solution that it comes in, uh, the, the solvent, which I love that term because I've heard people say, oh, you know, your image armor, it's a solvent and it's really harsh on da 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 da. da. It's all the pretreatments are. Um, well, speaking of harshness, look at the, so on the back of those uh, gallons you have there, we have a, uh, oh. you know, our SDS on there, and, and actually with the right. Platinum, we're, uh, it's, it's pretty impressive. Hey, you see that? I don't know if it's hard to see or not, but uh, basically there's, uh, see, non-regulated materials. Oh, we don't have any to report. This is, that's why we were able to get the CPSIA and all that stuff in the Okio text. Um, I'm not saying I absolutely am not advocating drinking it. Do not do that. Do not let little children play with it, any of that stuff. Uh, but it's it, basically it's the water is the carrier for the, the good stuff. And when you cut it down with water, you're just extending it out. So effectively, the ratio you cut it with water is effectively what you're going to be putting on the shirt in the end when you remove all that moisture. Yeah, and, and just to note though, when you do enter a, another variable into the process, so all of ours are tested and ready to run and we, we encourage you to use them as created. So if you do water them down, you might notice some less vibrancy or a little bit of difference in your print results. So just kind of keep that in mind as well. Yeah. And it all, again, it all depends on your procedure applications and all that. But what we have done is developed a really great product that gives phenomenal print results. Uh, we, when we were testing these and going through iteration after iteration, um, it, was, it was a painstaking process and trying to tweak it and find what would work and how we can make it better. And we are really confident and happy with, and henceforth the name, Platinum. I mean, that's what, one of the most expensive metals out there. And the great thing with this is uh, our pretreatment is not any more expensive than our Ultra. Uh, some people may still like the Ultra and use it. That's great. We're going to continue manufacturing it. Our dark shirt formula, people will still be able to get if they use it. Um, but we're not pushing that. We're trying to... 
that was our first formulation and for, mainly for slower older machines but the platinum is just rock solid it's a great uh, I think upgrade for your DTG printing and a lot of basically everybody that's tried it has agreed that it's better than anything that they are currently using uh, and have switched so we've got quite a few bigger shops that have made that leap and these bigger shops sometimes are very boom 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 on how they do stuff others are you know just trying to increase their um, vibrancy or use less pretreatment or whatever because it all comes down to a cost type thing the platinum is the same price as before uh, we do sell it <laughs> If you wanted to buy it in a 275 gallon tote we can do that too uh, we do sell a lot of drums 55 gallon drums and a lot of our distributors if you go to our website at imagearmorpt.com and uh, I believe it's under distributors I can't remember exactly under distributors you can find a listing of our current distributors a lot of them have this already in hand or will be getting it in the next day or two so after you get your free sample, if you sign up for it at the end of this, um, you'll be able to buy it from a very large portion of our current distribution network. Yeah, and just to clarify, on the website, it's under how to purchase. How and to then, purchase, And then correct. there's a list of different distributors broken down by state and stuff. Right. Um, I did want to make mention, so we did, uh, as Brian mentioned earlier on, this has been about a year or so in uh, progress to develop this and we've done some reiterations of the formulation um, to land where we're at here today but now I'm gonna say something that sounds kind of salesman -y, and we're, we're like anti salesman -y around here we, we really just like honesty but yeah. there was one beta shop that came back and said this is too good <laughs> yeah and this this is a true story it kind of was all like we were like okay like but but again that customer they kind of their forte is vintage. -y. Vintage, yeah. yeah so they're like, this is too use, bright. We can't yeah. use this. It makes the shirt look too good. I'm like, what? And they're like, no, all our stuff is vintage. We like uh, we. They actually water down the ultra and get a great vintage look. So it was just sort of funny. I was like, are you serious? You know, all it's like most people try to go for that great looking print. These guys were trying to go for something that worked, washed durably, and and but fit, fit that vintage motif, and it was like, okay, I, I understand and I get that, but it was just sort of funny. It was like, I, it didn't make a whole lot of sense at first. I'm like, oh, why wouldn't you want it to make it look better? And lo and behold, that would be why. So I guess it'd be some time for questions, if we have any. Um, fire away, I'm sure that uh, there's been a bunch, it looks like, that have been already submitted, and we'll just start trying to answer what we can for yeah. people here so all right well thanks everybody and again as we're going through these i'm just going to go in order as they came some of them i have been typing back um and i believe you're able to see some of the answered questions on there but just to start at the top of the list here question um well <laughs> going back to the viper mini somebody says well hey now that you got your um patent on it how about we do a free giveaway so how about a how free about giveaway everybody do wants you know something how right? expensive it is to get a patent <laughs> and the r&d just going into these things it's uh, uh it's like you saying hey you just switched to image armor platinum you should give away a thousand shirts for free to your customers just to show <laughs> you know uh but we have some creative uh things to do with the machines and coming up and and again we're going to be at the uh Printing United show in October in yep. Vegas. So leading up to that, we are going to have some some cool things in conjunction with that as far as the machines go. So, all right, next question. Um, has there been any improvements with the fit and consistency of the RTP blanks? Uh, yes. If you were around for the original batches of shirts, um, <laughs> the difference between that and today, phenomenal. Uh, we have hooked up with uh, Souls out of Europe and Souls is one of the top three garment manufacturers in Europe and produce I, hundreds of millions of shirts a year. Those are uh, all the shirts that are produced for RTP sold here and in Europe 
are produced in the same facilities, overseen with the same highest quality. And yes, we continue to make improvements and we're always open to suggestions of um, what you guys would like to see. And we get a lot of requests for stuff and we know that there, it's been a real challenge with inventory. COVID did not help any of that for us and we're still struggling with the supply chain. And um, we hopefully will be improving that dramatically here over the next year. That's our, our goal and we will achieve it. It's just one step at a time, so. Um, along the same lines on RTP train, uh, have we tried testing the new platinum pretreatment with RTP? Because I, I don't know that everybody knows, but RTP is in conjunction with Image Armor, and, it, the, and the it's way Ultra that it's, currently. It's it's a version. We we have to do a lot of modifications to the how we do everything and the chemicals and processes and all that stuff. So we used our Ultra as a base, have modified everything on so many different levels, and we're hoping that uh, we'll start seeing some improvements with all the products and that over, it's, it, that stuff doesn't happen overnight, but over the next 12 to 24 months, uh, I expect people will see a lot of improvements also in the RTP shirts just because of what we've learned over the past six years. Let's put it that way. So, good uh, question, though. Yeah, it, and that actually was from Deanna, our old, oh. our friend Deanna. So. <laughs> Hi, Deanna. Hi there. Hope you're doing well. Thanks for watching. Um, so, I, I can kind of answer this question, and I have answered uh, via type, but this one is exactly as... Uh, does this work with Brother GTX? And then somebody else had asked, asked, will it work with Kodak Inks? And yes. across the board. Pretty much it will work with every direct garment printer out there. Uh, well, except San, for Cornite. Cornite yeah. yeah, except for Cornite, which is a whole different animal, a whole different process. So this one actually comes from Jay, Jay Bussell. You, you, you know Hi, Jay. Jay. Hello. Thanks for tuning in today. Uh, and by the way, everybody watch their uh, podcast as well. They do a really great job educating the industry um, but he is wondering if the reason why we're not getting staining with platinum is because you can use less or is it due to the actual reformulation both that actually comes down to a really good question uh, it comes down to both uh, we have totally re-engineered uh, from the chemical side up uh, creating new stuff I guess new stuff in the formulation. And uh, that actually allows for a lot of different properties. Uh, we, without giving away the, the whole ball of wax or whatever you want to call it, the whole stuff behind the scenes is the formulation, it has improved significantly. And because of that, it's allowed us uh, more variety, or I should say, multiple other benefits, I guess you could say, to the enhancing of the use. One side benefit is we can actually use less of it on a shirt, but again, it depends on the quality of the shirt and um, the coverage, which will increase your yield per gallon, which will lower your cost per shirt and that type of stuff. But it is technically, uh, it's a combination of many things. It's not just one specific thing that allows for that. It's a whole bunch of different things. And uh, the way that we we mix it and have formulated it, creating all new compounds basically is what allows us to do what we're doing. And hopefully in the future, we're gonna take that, we'll, we'll just keep stepping this up. We got some, we got PhDs working on this. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> Well, as I like to say, you are Dr. PT, Dr. Preacher. Is that like here, Dr. So. Doolittle? So, well, you know, little, you, yeah, yeah. Crazy. You, yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, getting, let's get back to this here. Um, so somebody's asking about a, a shirt matrix, and we did talk about this earlier today. So we that did. comes down to variables. You it comes to... down to variables. Um, I know there are some matrixes out there for other things. The problem with, and we had this discussion internally, uh, the other day and again just this morning is those matrixes can change. That same shirt produced in Honduras versus Haiti 
can be a completely different amount of pretreatment. Um, we did see a brand, and I'm not going to say which one, but a couple of years ago, uh, the, it was a great shirt to print on, and then something changed in the manufacturing process, and it just did not print well at all. You had to double the amount of pretreatment. I mean, it was just, it was great shirt to print on, then all of a sudden, kink, it just dropped off the cliff. So, a general rule of thumb on the lighter colors with this here, you know, I, I tell people 10 to 15 grams probably on your lighter colors, depending on the quality of the shirt. You may have to go up to 20 grams. But darker shirts, if it's a really good black shirt, I've done as low as 10, 12 grams and gotten perfectly smooth prints with it. But that was on a very good high quality shirt. Again, it depends, you gotta do the apples to apples comparison. And a matrix, that's it. It, it, I understand the marketing aspect behind that, but for if you're just looking for somebody to tell you how to do everything, you probably shouldn't be direct garment printing in yeah. the first place. And I don't mean that in any bad way. It is a very technical thing. Uh, you have to be able to do artwork. You have to understand how the fabric of the shirt interacts with the pretreatment and how your printer interacts with the pretreatment and how the on-screen looks to versus what the shirt is. There are some basics, and I would say your light colors start at maybe 15 grams, and you can go down. If it's something like a uh, Gildan 2000, a rougher, lower count shirt, you're going to probably have to apply a little bit more pretreatment just to get a good print. So from that aspect, uh, I've seen everything where you can apply as little as 10 grams, and you might have to go as high as 25 or 30 grams. Obviously, the more pretreatment you put on, the more it costs you the stiffer the hand and feel is going to be. And even that right there with the hand comes down to how good is the quality of the yarn that's being used in the shirt. So yeah, matrix I, wise, it's, I would say a good starting point on any shirt would probably be 15 to 20 grams. And from there you can adjust it for and, and speaking of matrix, I mean, we've talked about this. I personally, based on what I do here have considered it, but, the time constraint to put into building out a matrix and they all your change and and all you're really doing is giving a loose estimation that anyways it, it's, it's yeah. still a bunch of variables to consider so uh, we would hate to give out information that that somebody could come back and say well you said well you, and that's you know and that's the thing there to yeah. think about too is is well, dean think about this you've got your your shirt and maybe the print looks phenomenal but you go to your heat press and you're jamming that ink down in versus running it through a conveyor dryer, those two white opacity, opacities are probably potentially going to end up being very, very different. And again, that won't matter what shirt you're doing it on. Yeah, so, that, or, that just or comes what down matri to what the matrix tells yeah, you. Yeah, that, that comes down to your printing process. It comes too, down so. to the printing, it and comes down process. to your entire process. Yeah. All right. So, but uh, very good question. Um, but general good rule of thumb, lighter colors, 15 to 18 grams or less, let's say. Uh, darker shirts, 15, 18 to maybe 20, 22, 3. 25 might be getting up on the high end just because this uh, a little goes a long way with the platinum. Okay. Um, well, <laughs> this qu I, I could have thrown this question away, but I found it funny. And I'm a big believer in is you d it doesn't, now you I'm won't scared. know. <laughs> well, you d won't know if you don't ask, right? Sure. So you always have to ask. Sure. Um, this person basically wanted to know, hey, what's the formula? <laughs> what's the formula? Well, that's a secret. A so. little eye of newt, wing of bat, and uh, some other stuff that I can't say because this is a kid-friendly show. <laughs> yes. Well, I, I commend them for at least asking, right? Well, you know what? I, I did have somebody. I actually had a very large corporation come to me a couple years ago and ask that question. One of their engineers literally said, so can you give me the formula? And you said how much money you got, right? I did this. What? <laughs> no. Yeah, oh well. No. It's like KFC. You know, we aren't... Uh, Actually, the KFC secret blend of spices did come out recently. I saw yeah, that. Yeah, but how so long did it take them? It took a long you know, time. They, well, the Coca-Cola formula is still Coca locked up. Coca-Cola Coca formula. But it is, it's, people just think it's this and that. It's, it's a lot more than that. It's a lot of time and... and 
trial and error and trying to figure out what works and doesn't work and understanding why it doesn't work on certain garments so that you can build upon that down the road. So. Um, there was a couple questions here that we're asking about UV um, and, and mm -hmm. staining with light. Mm -hmm. um, with, the, with what? W with light, with UV light. Oh, UV light. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much most all, you can minimize that. This actually does minimize quite a bit uh, of that. Uh, you're still going to get it. You still want to wash prior to wearing, as you would anything. Uh, the process is slowed down greatly with this, but we can basically cause any pretreatment to yellow under UV light. It's really interesting. When I had my screen printing shop, we had on the, uh, the shelves a bunch of shirts folded over like this. These were in a shop that only had uh, fluorescent lights up top. And what we ended up seeing was on the outside edge where the shirts folded over, there was light stripes there on the shirt. So if something is exposed to UV light, it, it, over time, it's going to fade. All you got to do is look at your upholstery in your car or paint jobs on a car, whatever. Um, this, the, all the pretreatments on the market pretty much tend to react to UV light. Now, our, our light shirt formula doesn't do that. And the only time we've seen it do it is due to an interaction with the uh, residual chemicals in the garment itself. And there's nothing we can do to control that. Uh, if there's a lot of chemicals left in the shirts, it may speed up that process. But, and that seems to be honestly where, Dean, we've seen most of that is on polyesters, we haven't really run into the UV discoloration in all of our testing, which is interesting when you think about it. So with the organics, the cottons, natural fibers, yeah, it, it it's going to still do that. Using less pretreatment is going to help that. This is more resistant to it. Is it still going to do it? Yeah, if you leave it out in the sun. And on some colors, you'll never see it. Uh, but if you're using a real light color and you leave it sit out too long, it is going to. And that's just being upfront and honest. I haven't seen a pretreatment that won't do that yet um, that is designed for white ink printing. Let's put it that way. Yep. And we just got a couple more here. Uh, we're rounding out an hour and uh, then we'll give away the free sample information. Yep. But uh, this is from the same person. What is the recommended curing time? Is it the same as ultra? And does what's the feel like on this one? Is it starchy or nope. soft? Or uh, the feel on this is a lot softer. Uh, it's not starchy like the previous ones or other pretreatments. The cure time, what we like to do here uh, if you can run it through conveyor dryer, that's great uh, because steam a lot of times will and can react with some of the dyes in the shirts. But what we like to do here is we use an air compressed or uh, air uh, stalls air fusion or whatever it's whatever that's called. Pneumatic. Pneumatic, yeah. Pneumatic press, long day. And uh, we will use a, a light parchment paper, put it over the pretreatment, heat press it at high pressure for about 15, 20 seconds, peel the paper back to let it steam out, then redo it. And if we need to hit it again after the second 15, 20 second press, do that until dry. So it's real similar to the ultra, but um, you know, it's, it depends, that all depends on how much pretreat you put down. You have to burn that moisture off. So less pretreatment, you can typically go less on your cure time, but it does need to be cured. Yeah, yeah, uh, because there, and I'm glad you mentioned that because there are, for some reason, there's a misconception out there that um, you can air dry, but I believe Not people that are, products. yeah, and I believe why the reason people were air drying is to avoid quote unquote staining, but a lot of staining was resolved or was a result of over application, and over application was a direct result of using a hand sprayer which um, yeah you know time, so yeah. um and again for so this kind of goes along the lines of the time and temp but somebody was asking hey can we cure this at a higher temperature like you do with the blood the brother pretreatment but no you need I to stick with don't our recommend recommendations uh, yeah. you can, again go ahead and try it our recommendations are 330 for two 15 to 20 second presses 
Um, can you do it at the higher temperature? Yeah, you probably can. Uh, give it a try. I'm not going to tell you no, uh, but you know, definitely give it. Is, is it going to hurt it? No. Just be careful not to over cure it basically for too long of a time. Yeah. And, and like we've done testing and the reason we come out with our cure time and temp is because of, hey, this is what we're getting the best results for. And this kind of is what works the best. So yes. every every manufacturer kind of does that as well. So they all have their own um, special or their own requirements and stuff. Um, once it is cured, is it okay to cure the print at a higher temp? But that comes down to your ink set. That comes though. down to the ink set. Yeah. So whatever your ink set is, that's your cure time. Once the pretreatment is cured, you should be fine to do whatever your ink set says. Um, all right. Two more questions here, and then we'll give away the link. Uh, we got so I, I i don't know if this is a distributor or a customer maybe a customer that has a larger operation but should we actively be switching ultra to platinum for our clients so what i'm going to say to that is we're still making ultra definitely give the platinum a try and i think that you will find that uh, this is going to be the general shift in the industry as far as our pretreatments are concerned. A lot of people are going to switch over to this just because of the benefits and the improvements that they see. So, you know, Ultra is still a great product. Uh, we sell a lot of it. And this is sort of like the upgrade to the Ultra. Just as when we had our dark shirt formula, Ultra set the bar higher, Platinum sets that bar a little bit higher in and of itself. So from that aspect, uh, give it a shot, you know, get the sample, try it out. And uh, we believe that you'll find that a lot of people will want to switch over to this or you will want to switch over to just because of the, <clears throat> the benefits. When we were, it was funny, we were doing, I remember this specifically, I'm doing all these different tests and mixing and taking the eye of newt and wing of bat and a little bit of, you know, ganja whatever whatever the i don't know what you know just throwing stuff together all the secrets throwing stuff together right uh effectively testing different things and i was bringing you samples on you know guild and 2000s and you were like what yeah yeah i, re I remember i'm like what are you doing back there man like <laughs> yeah. uh we're kind of shaking the industry up here with this so yeah, we're trying um, to well we think. so i so technically the, we have two more questions but okay. this one's really good i'm including it um, is this required to be agitated? Um, that always comes down to, does it stay now, in solution? Now yes. we, we do, do I recommend, you know, a little shake before using. Absolutely. Uh, do you have to No. but at the same point, <coughs> excuse me, but it's not going to hurt. Uh, you know, it's not like you have to sit there and shake it every hour or two or anything like that. Yeah, you know, what's it take to go shake the bottle up for five seconds before you start printing? Uh, not a whole and, lot. And speaking to that, we do encourage agitation on our light formula, though, because oh, yes. of the formulation. Absolutely. So. On all the pretreatments. On top of it, it has a little shake well before each use type thing. So we do that because it, you know, more of a CYA type thing. You know, that's like asking the shelf life of this. We say to one year, it technically could be multiple years, but from a, a CYA type thing, let's put it this way. If you have pretreatment, and this is, I have to laugh, our, our pretreatment has a shelf life of two years, three years, five years. If you have pretreatment that's left over and that old for that long, you should not be direct to garment printing, period. Just... Just putting it out there, you're in it, the wrong business yeah, because buy, buy it either and you use can't it. sell or there's some something seriously wrong going on. So if you have pretreatment sitting around that long, you're not making any money. It's well, just a matter of fact. Speaking of agitation, somebody had mentioned um, it's really hard to agitate when you're buying in drums. That's true. But if you're buying in drums, you're going through it a lot quicker. So and like I said, in that case, you know, how are you moving your drum and that drum that drum is going to typically um, be agitated when you're moving it into position and using, you're using that on a fairly, you're not letting that drum sit around for six months or a year. Yeah. So, so all right, rounding things out here, how soon is this going to be available to purchase? Some distributors have it already. 
Uh, some, I know it is in transport and you just have to call your distributor and ask for it. If you cannot get it uh, from your distributor, uh, it will be available on our sister store, directtoshirt.com. And uh, but speaking we... of getting getting the, the samples, getting it so you can try it, uh, what you can do since you've been with us this whole time for the, the webinar, go to imagearmorpt for pretreatment.com slash IAPT for image armor pretreatment. So that'd be the imagearmorpt.com slash IAPT. Dean will be sending out an email to everybody that signed up with that link in it. Uh, please be patient. We know that we are going to have a lot of these to send out and process. So give us a little bit of time and then for you know however long it takes to ship out via UPS to your facility. And uh, you know, get it, do a real quick thing, clean out your pretreatment lines and pretreatment uh, machine to make sure there's no cross contamination. And here's an interesting thing I actually found, Dean, that I, I thought would be an interesting tidbit for people. Even when I've done my testing here, even though I've flushed the lines, a lot of times it takes one or two uh, sprays to really get up to, to whatever, because of residual water maybe that may be stuck in the line or whatever like that. Um, so yeah, that that's makes why, sense for sure. yeah, that's why we're giving out these samples. So you can at least, you know, you can run a bunch of shirts, yeah. test it out, try it. I think on sweatshirts, you're going to find that it is going to help make that printing a lot easier and smoother. And um, I don't know, any I, other questions? Um, no, just the available to purchase kind of was the last question. I answered some uh, personal to there. And I also put the link imagearmorpt.com slash IAPT will give you the form to request yep. your free sample. And I'm sure the ladies in the front office are kind of getting inundated right now <laughs> with requests. But everyone that came today, um, you honestly are the first ones in the general public that it's are going to be able to get this and use it. And we want to hear back from you. So we actively encourage you to let us know how it's going. If you're looking for tips or tricks or, hey, I switched and I'm kind of getting these results, we are here to help. We we care passionately about the industry itself because we feel like the better we can make direct-to-garment, every person that's involved in the industry will benefit and it Making will just it continue better. to grow. And yeah. that's, that's sort of our whole ethos here is doing all this together, figuring out how to improve it so that we can expand the industry make it easier for you to do direct-to-garment printing, to be more profitable, to be more successful, to reach more customers. We can't go out and sell for you, but we can help make your products look better. And that is really what we're just trying to do. And you know, we appreciate everybody's support. And through that support, it allows us to reinvest into everything that we do to make the pretreatments better, our machines better, our RTP better. So I would like to thank everybody again for being present. And uh, this will be available online here in the next couple of days, again, in its entirety on our YouTube channel. And this presentation, yeah. And, yes. and just to reiterate, we do actively encourage, um, if you have a distributor that you like working with, please patronize your distributors. Yes. Um, they know you as a customer and they are able to take care of you. We they have gotten notice of this product ahead of time. So everybody's kind of been uh, planning for the launch here today. And so. if they don't have it up on their websites right now, over the next day or two, a couple of days, by the first part of next week, a lot of them will have it in stock, ready to ship. And uh, we, like I said earlier, remember, there isn't really a, a big worry about us running out of pretreatment because we can make a whole lot of it. I mean, a whole... <laughs> More than I can, it's like, oh my goodness, those are big. It's pretty impressive back there. But all right, Brian, any closing words? I'm going to unmic uh, again, you here. I just appreciate everybody that uh, came and joined us today and uh, wish everybody the best and hope that you sign up, get your free samples, and we'll see you again here in the near future. Remember, we do have some exciting announcements coming up that uh, I think might raise some eyebrows within the industry in and of itself. We'll just leave it at that for the moment. So thank you again, and uh, we'll see you again uh, sometime here in the very near future. Thank you. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for watching today. And once again, the website for your free sample is imagearmorpt.com.
facebook.com slash IAPT. Um, I will also be emailing the link out to everyone that was here watching with us. We do, uh, we do appreciate your time and hopefully everybody's as excited as we are. Um, the new platinum is pretty phenomenal. I come from a printing background myself and uh, it got me excited. So um, the only other thing I can mention is for future webinars, if you guys have any suggestions for things that you want to learn, things that you want us to talk about, things that you want us to cover, please email me directly. My name is Dean. I am the creative director here at iGroup Technologies. My direct email is dean at igrouptech.com. Um, I'm more than happy to help people. I, I do it all day. And that's what I do for a living and I love it. Um, and if anything, you know, needs to get going to Brian directly, I'm more than happy to uh, walk into his office and he kind of gives me the stink eye and we go, <laughs> no. Um, but yeah, once again, thanks for watching and expect your free samples.